So, a top university has gone woke. That's Bristol, by the way, which doesn't really come as too much of a surprise. And they've quietly axed the national anthem from graduation ceremonies. Mm. It's basically, they got a charter about 150 years ago, and the current students apparently think actually singing the national anthem, uh, I think at the beginning of probably graduation ceremonies, uh, is, uh, is not for them, and it's even offensive to some. Well... I just thought we'd put this in to remind us what utter nonsense goes on in the world. i um, very pleased to be joined by Rafe Hadel Manku. Rafe, hello again. Always a pleasure to be with you. Well, that's kind. I bet you say that to everyone, old chap. <laughs> but yes, welcome back. Um, my, there was part of me thought I don't want to cover this, but it's tiresome, it's irritating, but it deserves covering. Um, what do you make of the fact that 21-year-old students uh, seem to want to disown the national anthem. What does it say about them? And what does it say about the university? Are they a listening university? Or are they just completely and hopelessly at the mercy of their students? Well, the first thing to say, of course, is that we don't know how many students actually believe this. One of the problems we have is that we have extreme, an extremely radical element who tend to dominate student unions and student councils and so forth, who tend to exert undue influence here. And often the, the student body that will come out to vote is a tiny percentage. That's the first thing to say. But nevertheless, we have to acknowledge that the Britain's youngest generations, millennials and Generation Z, are actually the most radically left-wing in history. So the whole idea of love of nation has now been replaced by national self-loathing. And that's consistently, you know, Britain, Britain consistently ranks, for example, amongst the world's least racist nations. And yet over half of young Britons believe that racism is the biggest issue facing Britain today, bigger than the environment and bigger than Brexit. Rafe, can I just also remarkable. point out an awful lot of people want to come to this racist country, don't they, it seems? Yeah, well, that, that, that's precisely the point. But the problem here is by every single measure, a majority of young people today are completely out of kilter with the values and beliefs of the rest of us. Well, how has we come to this? Is it the, the, the education system? Is it the, the naive world of Instagram? What is it? Well, it's no coincidence that at the same time that we have the most radically left student population, we also have the most radically left teaching profession, sure, both at the right. secondary school level and at the university level. Now, when I was at university, we had two left-leaning academics for every one right-leaning academic. Today, it's about 11 or 12 to 1. That's in the space of 30 years. And of course, the left have been very, very effective at getting hold of the levers of power in academic institutions, the heads of department, on the bureaucracy, on administration, and they've been hiring people like themselves. And so, of course, it's no surprise, actually, you really almost can't blame students today for holding such radical beliefs when they're actually being taught by a, by a student, by a professorship, who actually hold beliefs which are completely out of kilter with those of different generations. Now, I'm not saying they should be taught right-wing things either, but any healthy, productive society needs to have a fair balance. That's always leads to... Well, it's interesting. I remember I had a pretty left-wing economics teacher back in the 70s. But he engaged. He would encourage us to challenge. And, uh, you know, he knew more than us. And often I lost the arguments. I hadn't refined my discussion and, and, and so forth. I, I suppose I want to ask here, we seem to be in an age where it's all... I have to ask, what are these students frightened of? That they ban people from universities rather than enter into debate? They, their answer to everything seems to be ban things. What are they frightened of about the national anthem? That they can't play it for the two minutes it is uh, at the opening of a service if it's not relevant to them much like a tv channel just tune out for t don't sing along with it why is this obsession to ban everything well, you know, there was an American academic called Professor Jonathan Haidt who co-wrote a very good book called The Coddling of the American Mind. And in it, he, he explains how over the past 30 years, or particularly over the last 15 to 20 years or so, we have so protected and insulated the young that they actually never have moments in their lives when they're alone with other students or other young people without an adult being present. So they never actually engage in argument. They never engage in fights. They're never put in positions where they actually have their own positions contradicted or in any way have to deal with the, the, the rough and tumble of life that we would, or were used to when we were growing up. There's a, there's a very often quoted analogy with 
allergies. So, of course, today we have many more allergies among young people than we used to have before because they grow up in sterile environments with antibacterial wipes and bleach being used everywhere. So they don't get exposed to those pathogens and things we all got exposed mm. to help us build up our immunity. As a result, having never had an argument in their life, having always been coddled and praised by their parents and by the health and safety culture of primary and secondary schools where you can't have conkers, you can't have snowball fights, they suddenly arrive at university and for the first time ever, they're facing opposing viewpoints. They're being contradicted. They're being challenged and they can't handle it. But that is what universities exist for, Rafe, because... That's, that's the very definition of university, exactly, to be open to a universality of ideas. I mean, I just wrote a chapter for my think tank on uh, reforming the education system. It's out next week, actually, our new book, State of Emergency. And in it, I actually call for all students on the age of 10 to 16 in secondary school to be forced to take part in mandatory debates where they have to debate the opposing point of view from the one that they would normally hold in order for them to know that there is validity to other arguments and actually be used to this whole idea of having... Uh, you know, that's fascinating. No, there's no such thing as a new idea, I hate to tell you, because back in 1974, we had to draw out of a hat the subject we would have to debate in a debating society, and you had to construct your arguments. We seem to have lost that. Um, Rafe, do forgive me, we have much less time than I hope to share on this, but I'm very grateful to speaking to you once again. My producer was absolutely wrong. She said, oh, I don't think you're like Rafe, I think you're very good and you're very <laughs> articulate. So just remember that next time someone rings you up. Very pleased to hear from you, Rafe Haydel Manku, he, historian and senior fellow at the New Culture Forum. He's right, isn't he? The bottom line is we're sending people to university who now fear debate and constructive argument. Very strange indeed.